My guest today is the founding HOD of the Biomedical Engineering Department of the University of Ghana. She's a senior lecturer, and she's learned, and she's an academic superstar. Please welcome to our program, Dr. Elsie Effa Kaufman. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Ken. Wow, wow, wow. It's good to see you. Good to see you, you look, too. You know, you know my, my security man came to tell me that so there's a girl looking for me. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't look carefully. Yeah. Didn't look at so there's it's a girl. It's a girl looking for you. It's a, it's a slim girl. Really? You turned 50 on the, on, the, on, the 7th, on the 7th of September, actually. That's right. You're 50 years old. I am. Is this just, Is this just uh, good jeans or an expensive gym subscription? No, no gym subscription. Mm. Excellent jeans. Excellent jeans. Excellent eh? jeans <laughs> and a clear conscience. And a clear conscience. <laughs> I found I found a name that maybe you will be aware of, but your your beloved students call you that in your department. Oh really? Mother Supreme. <laughs> <laughs> How supreme are you in your department? Yeah. Mother, first of all, did you know of the name Mother Supreme? I, I think I've heard it, but I don't think anyone has dared to come call me <laughs> Supreme in my face. <laughs> no, Ma they, they use it behind my Ma back. Mother mostly. Supreme. Yes. Well, why, why do you think they, they call you Mother Supreme, though? Um, maybe they've realized that I have their interest at heart, yeah. and I'm not going to allow them to go scot free with all that brain power they have. And so maybe <laughs> that's why they gave me that name. That's what I would like to think. What was the moment you realized that, look, I'm a bona fide TV superstar, or you've never realized? Uh, I, I don't feel like a TV superstar. What's well, a TV well, superstar supposed to well, feel yeah, like? like? You're on there. You're on there with millions of viewers uh -huh. and people who are ready to watch you every time you come on. That's mm -hmm. a bona fide TV superstar. Okay, I didn't realize. You, didn't re you never realized. Uh, no, I'm but, yet but, to realize. But people see you in town and say, hey, Dr. Kaufman, you know, really glad to see you, blah, blah, blah. Do people give you that kind of attention? Uh, yes, they do. Sometimes I hear people gossiping about me. And you know, they would have these arguments, it's head, no, it's not head, it's head. It's <laughs> and then someone will be brave enough to come up and ask, is it you? And then I'll have to say, why have you made this a problem of the day for yourself? A problem of the day, <laughs> <laughs> really interesting. How did this, how did this, the quiz, quiz thing start for you in the first place? Was it a part where the organizers thought, no, let's, let's go to Dr. Kaufman. She looked the same for the whole 10 years. <laughs> 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 no, 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 I, I don't think it was anything like that. You know, actually there was someone before I joined the okay. team. So it was Professor Ramadi who started it, and then there was uh, Dr. Uh, Eureka Adomako. Uh, and she was quiz mistress, but she was getting ready at the time, she was getting ready to go do her PhD. So the team was looking for a quiz mistress. Okay. I had arrived in Ghana, I was busily working at the Department of Physics, there was no engineering at that time. And my head of department, uh, Professor Udre Friye, was the physics consultant at that time. And so he called me and told me about this opportunity and that uh, he felt I could do it. And so I actually went to find out what it was because I wasn't watching the program. I didn't know anything about the program at all. And that's how it started. So I was actually recommended by the physics consultant at the time who was my head of department at physics. And you became uh, the quiz mistress? Yes, I did. I really enjoy you, you love it, don't you? I do. You I do. do. Um, let me touch on something that w w would not make you very happy, but your, your, your alma mater, Ibri Girls, doesn't seem to, you know, <laughs> be in the forefront of things when it comes to this, this quiz competition. That, does that hurt you just a little bit? Just a little tiny bit? Um, did you have to bring it up? <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, if, 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 if the school is mistress from your school, you might as well just, you know, at least win, win some time, let's, you know. Oh, once in a while they win. Uh, I mean, they, they were seated before no, the, the, the disaster last time. <laughs> uh, they were seated, so they've been winning contests. Uh, yes, no, I mean, it, it win hurts. the competition. I mean, it's only right, right? It, it hurts when it's happening, but I can't afford to dwell on it. Mm. Yes. Of course, I would like to encourage... Do you, you find yourself quietly, well. you know, rooting for, for Ibri Girls when, when, when you're in a competition and you're at the table and Ibri Girls is by your left and the other school is by your right? No, not, I don't root all. for any school at all. Not, not at all? Not at but all. But you feel the need now to, you know, take a few years off, go back to Ibri and instill in them the spirit of winning the national science and math quiz so that, you know. Why would I need to take because time off? That's a conflict of interest. <laughs> <laughs>
your, your school needs to win. Well, my, my, my school doesn't win either, but yeah, I mean. So you, why you, are you not you going to encourage no, the school? I am not a school. <laughs> but you told me about an episode where my school, the Bishop Herman College, uh, yes. came, came with uh, a lot of jamming and dancing, but still lost. Uh, yes, I, I actually like your school. Oh, you like them? Yes, uh, two years ago, they came with a whole band playing the bobobo. I mean, I, I enjoyed myself. <laughs> and it didn't matter when they lost, they still played. It was oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> so please go get them this to do better. I, 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 think, I think they are used to pa participate participation trophies. I mean, why do you jubilee when, <laughs> when you have lost? Let's talk about your, your career now and, and mm -hmm. education. Do, do you think that you would be Dr. Elsie Effa Kaufman if you did not go to the University of Pennsylvania? Uh, <laughs> probably not. Okay. Probably not because I was on a different life path. Okay. You know, I was a good science student when I was at a break. And so uh, the plan was to go to medical school and become a medical doctor. I would probably be called Dr. Ifa, mm. but I don't know about the Kaufman because I met my husband. <laughs> oh, over there. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. And I certainly would not have been a biomedical engineer or a bioengineer. Definitely not, because there were no engine, uh, bioengineering programs in Ghana at the time I was going to school. Mm -hmm. So life would have been completely different, I think. So you'd have been a medical doctor? Probably. Is, is this because this is pro probably the only, only real route that Ghanaian students have to take if, if they ex excel in the sciences? It's not the only one, but that's the impression that is created. Mm. And it's causing a lot of problems for us. So the best students want to go to medical school. It's mm. not a bad thing to want to go to medical school, but some of them are actually being coerced into it. Mm. Some of them have no passion for it, but are going anyway because that is what is expected of them, you see. And um, when they don't make it, if they don't make it, it's a real problem for us. I am in biomedical engineering, so you, you see just from the name, they seem to think of it as a second choice. And we get large numbers of students coming to biomedical engineering who have no real passion for biomedical who engineering. Who have been rejected from yes. the, the, the medical yes. school. And if they don't or reorient their thinking and start finding the value in what they have got, mm. uh, it's very difficult to actually train them. Because mm. nothing you tell them makes any sense. They are busily trying to get into any medical school. Mm. At all, at all. Yes, and not focusing on their but studies. But for students who are just listening to this program and mm -hmm. wants to make such a move, why, why is it so convincing to become a biomedical engineering student instead of going to medical school? Well, it's a very satisfying career to have. Mm. You see how happy I am. <laughs> <laughs> I use myself very as well an example. satisfying it's career. A, yes, because you are, you are trained to be an engineer. Engineers solve problems in, real, in the real world. Mm. Just imagine using your knowledge to be able to make a difference. And we apply our knowledge in engineering, science, mathematics to solve problems in healthcare. So to make somebody's health a little better, to make somebody's life a little better with your engineering knowledge, there's nothing like it. It's very rewarding. Is this why you, you, you founded the, the department at the University of Ghana? Because it wasn't existent before you became founding at HOD, was it? No, there was no engineering at the University of Ghana. So you, so you pushed this I agenda to make sure that there's biomedical engineering department at the University of Ghana? Yes, I actually left Ghana on a promise. I attended the United World College of the Atlantic. Okay. Okay. And it was a scholarship program, and the idea was to go get this wonderful experience. It was a two-year experience, and at the end of all your training, you had to return to your home countries, an international school. Mm -hmm. So students had to return to their home countries and make a difference. Mm -hmm. So in what way was I going to make that difference? Mm -hmm. If I have something which was not in existence, mm -hmm. I felt it would, have, it would be excellent to bring this knowledge I had and to make it available to my own people. That's, that's, that's yes. incredible. With, with, the, with the, the female students in your department mm -hmm. uh, who, who want to tow your path and, and, be, and become even more than you have achieved, what, what are some of the peculiar challenges you, you believe your young girls in your department face that the, the guys don't? Okay, actually, in, if you look at the different uh, engineering, types of engineering, Biomedical engineering is actually not that bad when it comes to underrepresentation of uh, ladies. Or it's young not that bad. It's not that bad. It's bad, but not as bad as some other 
Yeah. Because usually the engineering uh, disciplines that have something to do with social and or humane context mm -hmm. attract more women okay. because the young ladies want to make a difference in people's lives. Mm -hmm. So first thing is, uh, at least in terms of uh, numbers, it's not as bad as some disciplines, but they are still underrepresented. Mm -hmm. They have few role models. You, would you believe in my department? I'm the only woman who is a lecturer in there. In fact, all of engineering, the numbers are very low. And so if you don't regularly see somebody that looks like you, that thinks like you, that probably feels like you, uh, it's difficult to imagine yourself in a successful career in a place like that. Mm -hmm. huh. so, uh... Yes, so mentorship is, is very, very important. And yet, I don't think I have the capacity to mentor everyone. Yeah. Uh -huh. The other thing is also the stereotypes, the okay. general stereotypes. Uh, society in general seems to think of engineering as a male... A male-dominated area. Yes. And so uh, the confidence to want to even get in there and to stay in there. There are also issues with the way in which we teach engineering. So I've told you that people are entering, the young ladies are entering because they want to make a difference in people's lives. First two years are foundation courses. If you don't bring any opportunity for the students to experience this problem solving, mm. uh, interacting with people, and doing things that seem to matter, they will lose interest, especially the young ladies that chose to enter engineering because of that reason, mm. you see. Mm. So there are many different things that actually make it difficult for an engineering student, a female engineering student to thrive. Mm. But they've been doing very well. I'm very happy to say that uh, many years, um, the best graduating fem uh, students in the biomedical engineering have been female. Oh, yeah? Just this past year, we had two first class female students. Oh, yeah. The year before, the best student was female. That's incredible. In the past, the best overall engineering student, one of my, my mentees, <laughs> was female. Well, so uh, when, once they get uh, the supportive environment and they believe that they can do it, they actually do make it. That's, that's incredible. But as your department and, and engineering in, in, in the University of Ghana generally solving problems? Hmm. <laughs> this is a big challenge. We train our students to solve problems. Maybe not as well as I would like to see because we also have issues these days with class size. For a very practical program that requires, if you actually want someone to solve engineering problems, they have to do projects where they have had experience on a real problem, they have started from the beginning and come to the end with a solution. The way the course is structured, our students are required to do a final year project. For that, they have to pick problems, real life problems, mm -hmm. and go through this process. Some of them do. The ones that do, actually do solve problems in the sense that they present you first with a problem that exists in real life, mm -hmm. And they propose a solution and work on a proof of concept showing that this problem can be solved. Where we have not done well is to transition from that classroom solution, that prototype, mm -hmm. many of which are sitting in my office, to real life commercial products that are actually in use. So if I tell you that yes, they do solve problems, mm -hmm. Uh, it is true, but to transition from a solution that is sitting in my office to a solution that is in the real world, that is where we've had the challenges. That's, that's a challenge. So how, how do we get over that hump? You have these prototypes in your office uh, that are supposedly to, to solve problems mm -hmm. in, in our country. How do we move from those prototypes to practicality in the Ghanaian society? Yes. At first, there was a lack of interest. I mean, it was as if we did not expect our students to solve any problems. Oh, yeah? Yeah. We do not expect them yes. to solve problems. How, how, how would you start an engineering school and then you have no provision in place for intellectual property right protection? It means you are not expecting your students to come up with any intellectual... To innovate. Yes. Okay. So now that the universities are actually setting up offices for intellectual property rights protection, it means we are beginning to take things seriously. Mm -hmm. I used to take my students out into the field. You see, we are producing solutions for healthcare. So we go to hospitals, and I would um, interact with the hospital staff, the ones who are responsible for using some of the products we are supposed to produce. Mm. And they used to say, no, we are OK. We import everything, and we are fine. Mm. When I start hearing that they would be willing to consider the types of solutions 
that our students have produced, and I, I will know we have made progress. Okay. Another thing that has so been industry happened, is unwilling. Is, is is that what it is? Well, they are the, used the recipients to, of this this yes. help are unwilling, <laughs> or they can't imagine. They they don't believe it. Okay. We need a chance to show what we can do. Okay. But we need to do it in a in a very supportive environment because if a student tries to solve a problem, they may not succeed the first time. It may take longer. But if you are unsupportive, you are willing to import very quickly. Mm -hmm just to get your business to move on, mm -hmm. we don't develop our capacity to be able to do this. So that needs to be in place. In addition to that, what has been happening recently, people have been approaching me now, wanting okay. to know the sorts of projects we are doing in the department, mm -hmm. and if they could look at those projects and see if they could fund some of them. This is a new development. They could fund some of them. Yes. That's progress, right? Yes. So this is a new development, and if we have more and more of those, something will happen. I myself need to to do uh, more in this regard, I feel. Okay. So um, this is something that I'm thinking about for the future, but I need time. If I spend all my time teaching so many students, I don't get the time to sit down and actually put down the plan. But I see myself in the future doing something for these innovators, you know, providing them with a supportive envir environment to move these prototypes to actual commercial production. When I decide to do it, I'll come to you and you'll help me out, won't Abs you? Absolutely. Yes. We'll do. We'll but do. I need time to be able to put all the structures in place. I, I believe you would also. Your, your students tell me you have a real zest for life and you're very practical even in your, your examination question setting. There's, there's a case where I saw, I saw the paper where you, <laughs> you, it, you, 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 you talked about Black Panther mm -hmm. in a question. Mm -hmm. talking about the, the materials that were mentioned in that movie. Yes. Is, is this your idea of practical teaching to imbibe knowledge faster than, than, than regular? Absolutely. If you came to my classes, you would find interesting things going on. Uh, every course I teach, I have a course project. So you will do a course project. Okay. Okay. And the course projects are supposed to reinforce the theoretical things I'm teaching in class. Mm. In addition to that, you're supposed to think beyond even the course. Think of problems in the future. At the time I said that exam question, these students were busily watching Wakanda. <laughs> if you're if you are, if you are learning uh, biomedical engineering, biomaterials, yeah. and in that movie, they are coming up with these new concepts of materials that can do so many different things. I, I thought it would be natural for you to link your knowledge from the classroom to this enjoyment you're having in the movie theater. Excellent stuff, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I decided to ask a question on it on my exam. How did uh, they do that? So how come you know about my exam questions? No, no, I, 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 it's like one of the <laughs> students sent me a couple of papers. Like, this woman sets questions from movies, you know. Let's talk about the last bit of this education bit. You are, you are of course, in the forefront of education in our country. <laughs> you are revered as, as an educator at, at all over the world also. But you, you happen to have kids. I want to know your 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 perspectives as a parent uh, in this uh, senior high school uh, track tracking system is is it, it going to be effective hmm you're asking my opinion as, as a, a parent, parent. Yeah, as a parent. yes yeah. i actually have a, a young man in school now he started out in the gold track he was switched to green track i actually made him do calculations of how much time he would spend in school over the period of his uh, senior high school education, and I was a bit concerned about the actual length of time. Or the hours? Uh, number of days. Number or, of days. Okay. Yes, in school. Uh, I know the syllabus really hasn't changed, and I know the expectations I have of the students that join my department. Okay. I'm concerned about their ability to cover the the content of the syllabus in the time he's before going they to get be, to you. Yes. So you're already concerned about I'm concerned the, the about more that. basic level before they even get to your department in the university. Yeah, they are, that, they are my inputs. I have to care about that. And yeah. I'm also talking as a parent. Yeah. My young man wants to come to university to do a certain course. I'm not sure he's, <laughs> he's, he's <laughs> yes. adequately prepared. For yes. That. So I have to put in interventions. And then this new system also allows them to come sit at home for extended periods of time. I'm concerned about that. You know, the devil finds work for idle hands. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to yeah, keep yeah. them engaged. Yeah. How do you so, keep them engaged? I yes. Think. So now what is happening is you either find them teachers to teach extra at home, or you get them to join some of these uh, programs that have sprouted up everywhere. Yeah, there's yes. a real influx of 
I see billboards also. Oh, yes. Go there. truck classes, green truck classes. There's a need because you can't just keep them at home doing yeah. nothing. They'll forget everything they've learned. Okay, so as a parent, I'm, I'm struggling with uh, strategies to keep him engaged, to keep him learning. I'm not sure what they learn at these places. I've asked to see his notes. I'm not, I'm not convinced. <laughs> that they are actually... So I'm a, as a parent, I'm a, I'm a little nervous about what's going on. Mm. But we haven't had a chance to formally evaluate what is happening yet. So I'm, I'm As a scientist, you can do an evaluation and, and tell us whether this will be effective in the next couple of years, can you? Yes, but, but you know we are playing with uh, the lives of our young people. People yeah. without ethical clearance, we are performing an experiment. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're a very proud mom. And you're, you're, I am. What, what's the best part of, of raising your kids for you? Um, the best part is to see this helpless little thing <laughs> transformed into someone who can actually give you advice. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Uh, and so it, it's, it's, it's a challenging job because they don't come with manuals and each of them is so different. Mm. And so uh, to be able to uh, figure out what each child needs at a certain moment in time, that, that is a real challenge. And with the stresses of everyday life, you know, long hours of work, sometimes I worry that I'm not spending enough time, I'm not doing the things I should be doing. But they are very resilient. They, they, do, they do grow to, to become very <laughs> interesting individuals. Uh, yes. Your priorities have changed all over the years. And over the years, what are your priorities today? Um, their priorities haven't changed that significantly. The activities change sometimes, but the priorities, the foundation actually remains the same. Okay. I have made it my mission to actually bring out the talent and then the potential of the young people I meet. Okay. Uh -huh. That is what I do. That's the mission. That, yes, that is what I do, and I'm still doing that. Mm -hmm. So when I go to a class and I'm teaching, I have to bring out the best in my students. Mm -hmm. I'm still doing that. You're still doing I'm that. I'm still doing that. But what changes is the activity. So I've told you about my plan for the future to transition some of these products they are coming up with into commercial products. Mm -hmm. So I'll be working hard in that direction. What would be Dr. Elsie Effa Kaufman's legacy to the coming generation? Hmm. My legacy, contribution to education, a different sort of education, the education that is used to solve real life problems. Do you think you know, the children would actually become engineers like you? No, they don't want to be engineers. <laughs> I encourage others to uh, consider engineering to get into the sciences and my own children want to escape from it. <laughs> I think it's, it's, it's too much pressure, it's you know. Pressure. So they show up anywhere, they say, oh, your mom is a, a science stress. person, yep, 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 and so you smart. must be a science, and they'd want to live their own lives. Do engineers. you feel like the most famous Ibu girl of all time? Oh, no, no, we've had, we've had some really amazing old students. And so I, I'm not sure that I'll be the most famous yeah, among them. But, but, but you're, <laughs> yes. sure, you're, you're sure the most passionate. You'll be girl. Next time that you try to win the quiz, come on, do something for your people. Something like, <laughs> help me out. <laughs> <laughs> do something for your people. I mean, you can't possibly be sitting on this bench and your school ever wins, you know. We need to do that. And like you advise, I'll go back to Pando and encourage my people to play more. Yes, so I'll be doing and, the same. And win next time before they play, because you can't be playing whilst you're losing. It's not good enough. I actually heard that my senior colleague, Paula Dumotri, was the one interviewing you whilst your back went missing. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about this moment. Paula Dumotri trying to talk to you, and then what happens? Your bag is missing all of a sudden? No, after I went to hand over the trophy okay. to the winners, okay. I was on my way back to my seat when I met him and he was asking me a couple of questions. questions okay. So I told him he should be patient. I was going to pick my bag and I would be back. But when I got to my seat, there was no bag. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't watch him man as well been part of this conspiracy. Oh, I don't think he, he had anything he, to do with he it. He stole. I mean, he delayed you and your bag was missing. But we still haven't found a school that took your bag. By the way, it's just for perspective. Who, was the, who, who were the winners uh, that very edition? 
I don't remember. Then who, who are the <laughs> opponents? I don't remember. <laughs> 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 so the, 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 the rumor, the news came out that uh, this adult boy stole Dr. Effa Kaufman's uh, uh, but, but, we, but we don't know, and she, she says she doesn't know for sure as well, but you, you, you think that this adult student... No, actually, they didn't do anything they, like they, that. They, 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 were, the they were too busy worrying about the questions they couldn't answer. Oh, but, but don't you think out of, you know, losing uh, no, and they being they didn't a, a little spiteful, they might as well no, they, they didn't do it. The woman, anything. she was hard, make we show how small. <laughs> 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 that's, that's interesting. So you took a paper bag next year, right? Oh, yes. So now I, I, I take a paper bag every time. Oh, yes. Sally. And I, I'm much wiser. I only this, carry this necessary people, things. This is what I'm taking bag. away from your swag now because your bags are very beautiful and I have to take paper bags to the, to, to the contest. Yes. Anyways, thank you so much, Dr. Kaufman.